Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habita fillah. What to do when your iman is da'if, is weak. Well, we talked about this many times, and you'll find so many lectures, I believe, out there, because it's such a serious problem, and such a common problem. Don't think that you're the only one with iman that's weak, but don't rejoice in that fact. So that's very important to know. Yes, all of us. As we mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta. Wa khayran khattayin atawaboon. All the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who make sin or mistakes are the tawaboon. Those people who repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. So, very important to know Toba, repentance, and how to make re a, a repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal. Because all of us suffer from weak Iman from time to time. And all of us have different stages, different, not just different stages of Iman, but different general levels. For example, Perhaps the scholar, he, and I'm talking about a practicing scholar, that's why I'm referring to him as a scholar, because he practices his knowledge, not just someone who's memorized, not someone who gets in a scandal every week for messing with women, for messing with boys, for messing with all these kind of things, but rather, we're talking about a scholar, the one who's implementing his knowledge, who never you will never find an accusation like that. For example, many of our ulama in Saudi, because they are, there's no comparison, I'm, and, and people need to get this out of their heads to say that, mashallah, we, we have du'at and we have people, maybe their levels of mashayikh, perhaps in the West, in America, in the UK and stuff, who studied and who put in time and who have knowledge. But do we say that they're like a lot of our imams of the deen? No, absolutely not. They sat at their feet and they gained some great benefit and they are benefiting their communities, but you have to know the levels, that people have different levels. Ahlul Sunnah Mutafawwit wa Ahlul Bid'ah Mutafawwit or Tafawwit. Ahlul Bid'ah, the people of innovation, they have different levels and the people of Sunnah have different levels. So the point I want to make here, the point I want to make here, Habitifillah, is that by knowing that we uh, have different levels, for example, that would be in Saudi Arabia, for example, one of the scholars to be accused for some inappropriate conduct or relationship with a woman is, is very serious, very great. Not like the way we look at things in the West with our students of knowledge. We have many brothers, unfortunately, that have called to Kitab wa Sunnah, but have been known for doing, uh, have committed adultery and fornication swearing, doing this, and, and inappropriate conduct and behavior, our society is different. The level of knowledge and iman and the expectations are different. Saudi Arabia, that would destroy for sure. He'd be destroyed forever. Never would people accept from him again if one of the, the people that are mashayikh had, had this thing, whereas our society is very different, and we look at it different. So people have different thresholds where we have different boundaries because their level of knowledge, they stay away from the doubtful matters because their whole life is dedicated to ilm of fiqh. So that means their realm of falling into a sin is generally a bit different or is different because of their level than somebody who has less level than them and then someone who is just a lay person and then someone other than that because of, because of their level. Because of their level. So yes, we all, so for example, somebody on that high level 
of scholarship and Iman for them having spoken, uh, you know, with bad manners or uh, dealing with someone inappropriately as far as in their manners or or perhaps could be a business dealing or anything would would be more in the realm of some mistake or sin that they might make, not those other things, not at least uh, you know pornography and things like this. Whereas someone who has less knowledge and net less practice, who's weaker, not on the same level, their realm of iman, you could say, that it would be easier for them because they have so many doubtful things. They watch movies, they do this, they do this, they do this. So they their their environment is different. Whereas those are they may not have a TV, they may not even really go to the internet except for very specific things. They're busy with elm, they're busy imparting dawah and knowledge and elm very different da'ira or circle of doubtful things that come into their life to impair their iman. But the point is all of us suffer from weak iman and our iman fluctuates. This is the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. This is the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The iman yazid bi ta'ah wa yanqus bi ma'asi. That iman it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it decreases with masiya, with sinfulness. Meaning when you commit sin, that lowers your iman. Unlike the murjiyah, and unlike many of the people who are infected by that creed of irja, which is so common with the many of the average Muslims in, in today's society. For example, sisters will not wear a hijab, not cover and say, you don't know what's in my heart. Yeah, I know I'm with the uh, this boyfriend, but we don't commit zina, we just do other things. We only go to movies, we only hug and whatever, akramakum Allah, but we have boundaries. You don't know what's in my heart, brother. You know, don't don't say anything. Or the brother who says, you know, he, he shaves his beard, his pants are tall, and he does all kind of things. He's openly does stuff. He says, yeah, I watch a little porn. He's open about it. Whatever the case may be that he does, that is a reflection of his iman, and he may believe that what he's doing is okay from jahil, from ignorance. Or he may believe that it's sinful, but that it's not really a big deal. You don't know what's in his heart. He's really a strong, stern believer. But that's not necessarily the case. That doesn't negate that he loves Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we learn this. This is a beautiful thing. We learn this point of Aqidah. From a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a Sahabi Jalil radiallahu ta'ala that he had the problem of, he, he, he was a drunkard. Yes, he was a Sahabi. And he drank, he drank alcohol, he was getting drunk, loaded. Radiallahu ta'ala And would that be in the case, the other Sahaba, you know, when he, you know, it, it had been a repetitive offense, and the other Sahaba radiallahu they wanted to, you know, you know, uh, do something very strong to him and, 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 and when it came to lashing, they wanted to really give it to him and they wanted to curse, curse him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, not. Because he loves Allah wa Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah. So that shows us, and that's a part of our aqidah in Iman, a lot of people forget that, that yes, the pe person could be in some serious sin, but they still do have love for Allah wa Rasul. That doesn't negate totally their love for Allah wa Rasul. It means there's nuks, yeah. There's their shortcomings and their thing, but they still may have some people they really love Allah wa Rasul. So like I said, they love Islam, but they cannot seem to overcome certain sins. It just bombards them. It's on their back. It, this is swallowing them. We've known how many <coughs> people over the time, brothers and sisters, that they do, they love, they're, they're soldiers for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're striving in the society. They're striving to be Muslim, they love being a Muslim. They love the fact that Allah took them from kufr to iman, they love that. And they don't want to go back to kufr. But, they have certain sins and it swallows them. But we have to know that that is a decrease in iman. And that's the point, that's the aqid of Ahl Sunnah. So what's the prescription for that weak iman? How do we deal with that? How do we deal with this, this ma'asi and the, this the noob that, that seems to be covering us and, 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 and overcoming us at times? 
and makes us have doubt in our iman and doubt in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we deal with that? Those are real questions. And those are questions time and time again we strive to answer and we strive to implement in our own lives. And as I mentioned, first try to read as much Quran as possible. You need that. The Quran is the soul food, it massages the heart. Especially those ayat that deal with Tawheed and they deal with Jannah wa Jahannam, you know, the punishment. And they deal with things that are going to encourage you to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So strive your best to read Quran and read the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Read the Kitab al Iman in Bukhari and Muslim to strengthen your aqidah and know about these uh, issues of Iman. Likewise, surround yourself with righteous companions. And this is imperative. That people are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, for example, most of your friends are non-Muslim, then you need to reassess your thing, especially your, your friendship. Because that means you've indulged yourself with people who don't remind you of Allah, even if they're nice and good-mannered people. But they're not going to remind you. They're not going to say, more than likely, they're not going to say, hey, it's time for you to make salat. Or more than likely, they're not going to say, you know, subhanAllah, look at that. Is they're going to say something else. They're going to use a different language, have a different manners, different ways of doing things. So you need to surround yourself with Ahli Iman. And I mean people of strong Iman, people of, uh, who are on the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah, and the people who will remind you of goodness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth thing. Aside from the good, righteous companions, is increasing your good deeds. Increasing your good deeds. Make your intention to do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's a small amount of money, give it to a homeless person, strictly for the sake of Allah. Or do a small kindness to one or both of your parents, if they're living, or your grandparents. Do some small kindness for someone strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Or if you don't have anything and you, you can always smile. You can always fast an extra day strictly for the sake of Allah. Clean some of those sins off. There are physical benefits as well, but you're doing it strictly for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal to come closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So fast strictly for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And fasting will help you. It will help put a barrier between you and some of those sins. It will help increase your taqwa. It's like a cycle. So the more you do good, the more the just by default, it's going to make it more difficult for you to do evil. More difficult. Doesn't mean it's going to stop it. Also, concentrate on your Salat. Try to improve your Salat. Be vigilant and striving to affirm your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. And fifth or sixth, the last point I want to make is lots of dhikr and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you remove that sin from you. If you struggle with drugs and alcohol, oh Allah, please help me. I'm, I'm weak and I and I, this environment or whatever, it, it, it affects my heart and I just, when I get sad, I hit the, hit the bottle or I hit the pipe. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure you from that and keep striving, keep trying to get away from it. If your problem is, for example, as a man, it's women. Of course, take the halal, strive to get married if you're not married. If you're, you have one wife, and you have the means, and you feel that that's enough, take a second. But you have to be, you have to work on the, the, the asl, which is, is that iman if it's causing you to do sinfulness. So you need to distance yourself from the haram and ask and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and assist you with that sin. And removing that sin and being away from it and what have you. And likewise, whatever the sin may be.
that you have to put a barrier between you and that sin and strive. That's why it's a striving. It's not, and this is a jihad and nefs. This is jihad and nefs. This is striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overcome your desires, to remove remove sinfulness from yourself and this is a type of hijrah as well the Prophet said that this is one of the great hijras is that you make hijrah the muhajir is the one who makes hijrah from his sins so try to make hijrah from your sins run from your sins and these are just some of the ways that can hopefully help you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and figure of our evil and bless us to be of the Muhajireen for his sake away from our sins and ma'asi and thanu and all of those things which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam